morning, everybody. I love slush. I love the people at slush. You are the energy of slush. A huge school of fish accomplishing amazing things together. When we improve leadership, we can improve anything. Anything. Leadership is the foundation of all sustained success. Success can be fleeting if you have no leadership, but if you have strong leadership, it can last for, success can last for a long, long time and be sustained. And as startup CEOs, you may MVP and pitch and fail and pivot all in one day or one hour, but leadership goes deeper than that and takes a longer time to develop. It's a very important skill, but it doesn't come overnight. It takes a lot of reflection and learning, and <clears throat> it takes a lot of uh, trial and error to become a strong leader. But leadership is the foundation of all success. <clears throat> In today's world, when we have a networked world, everything is connected, everybody is connected, employment has lost its meaning, people are getting together ad hoc in large groups, the organizational life changes as well, and leadership must change. And that is why I created the School of Herring to depict a modern organization where we are all fish swimming in a school of fish. We tend to idolize people, and we tend to look up to people and think they are really good, and we tend to try to develop ourselves to be better and to become big fish. And of course we should, and I encourage you to do so. But when it comes to leadership, we are all just small herring, or even Baltic herring. We are all small fish that look pretty much the same if you look from afar, and leadership is about aligning the fish and getting the school of fish to swim in one direction, to be agile, to change direction, to defend against threats, to find nutrition and to be successful, and to be very quick in those moves. And there's nothing as powerful as a group that moves as one. That is much more powerful than one big fish. One big fish is actually very vulnerable, but a school of fish is hugely uh, strong and productive and can defend itself. And that's why I said I love slush, because slush is like a school of fish. It doesn't have many employees, many people didn't know each other ahead of time, but once everybody gets together here, amazing things happen in a short amount of time, because there's a unity around purpose and on what we are doing here, and people just do their stuff but it's difficult to find a leader. It's difficult to see who is orchestrating what, because it's just a giant school of fish moving very rapidly and creating a lot of energy and then a lot of output and added value. <clears throat> it's important to know that we are not born leaders. We are born as babies. Remember that? When we're born, we're babies. Babies are not leaders. Anybody can become a leader. It's not something you have in your DNA. It's not something you grow up sort of getting from, you may get something from your parents, but leadership is something you develop. You yourself develop leadership. And the first step to doing that is to accept the challenge, to have a willingness to lead. And surprisingly, many people don't do that. But if you have a willingness to lead, you are on a path to becoming a leader. And with that willingness, all you need to do is do a little bit more. Take a little bit responsibility for results. You go into the toilets here and there's paper all over the floor. You pick it up and throw it away because the previous guy didn't do it. That's taking responsibility for results. And you're already a leader in that space. So you start by the, having a willingness to lead, and then you take responsibility for results. You don't take responsibility for making decisions or being a cool guy or being on stage. You take responsibility for results. 
And ultimately, great leaders are those who create more leaders. They don't create followers, they create more leaders. And that is the ultimate sign of a strong leader. So what is it in leadership that leads to success? I said it's the foundation of success, and it's a long, long list. I have here only five aspects of leadership and how you reach success, how you un build a foundation for all your products, your mobile apps, your games, your pitching, your VC talking, your fundraising, your hiring, all of those things which are your daily work. They are the underlying that is leadership. Number one, hire for strength. We tend to hire people we like or people who have no annoying feature, but we should hire for strength and then develop the strength in those people and deal with the weaknesses. Make the weaknesses irrelevant. It's a difficult thing, but hire for strength. Know what you need and hire that feature, and then you deal with all the weaknesses that the person has. Because, admit it, everybody has weaknesses. So hire for strength and then work to develop the strength of that person and of all people. Number two, it's we, not I. When you're a leader, every time you say I, you are alone. And every time you say we, you have the power of the group, power of the crowd. Certainly, there are decisions that you make yourself. And if you make mistakes, then you do look in the mirror and you say, I. But when you talk about what you're doing and what you're deciding and your success, when you talk about we, you think we, you talk we, you say we, then you're building an organization. You're building a school of fish with a, that's working together. Number three, we see leaders when they speak. So we tend to forget that the most important task for a leader is not to speak, but to listen. A leader can give orders by speaking, but everything else happens by listening. To create a strategy, to get commitment from the team, to understand what's happening, to figure out customers. For all of that, it's about listening, and listening very deeply and carefully. And the best leaders in the world are some of the best listeners. That's, by the way, also a reason why uh, shy people, introverted people, and other misfits are very, can become very good leaders, because early on they learn to listen. <clears throat> and then when you listen, you can learn and you can change. Number four, a leader always asks, what do we need to do? And I mean this very concretely. You can go into any meeting here, sit down and say, what needs to be done? And you look around and somebody will know. So I mean word by word, use this sentence in leadership and amazing things will happen. Because the organization knows what needs to be done. And when the leader asks, the, the answer will appear. So it's a very concrete, very useful way. Many times we think about something else. We think about what we look like or how it appears or we think about our stress or we think about something, much, or something else. But we should just ask ourselves, given the circumstances we have here, what needs to be done? And finally, and very importantly in startups, it's about focus. Startups are very innovative. So we tend to go in a million directions at once, because innovation is about creativity and thinking outside the box and all of that. And we must have the discipline to remember that we probably have a thousand ideas, and we should pursue only two of them. We should definitely have the thousand ideas. We should think about them and plan them. But then we should pick just two or three and focus on those. Focus is the foundation of any growth. There is not a giant corporation that started as a startup that didn't focus very sharply. So with, by focusing the organization, you get the unity of purpose, and you get the power of the whole school of fish to reach the goals. And then you can expand. But remember that always with innovation, there are far more ideas than you should 
execute. Ideas are great, but pursuing all of them, that's a really bad idea. You are startups, most of you, and it's important to know what a startup is. It is a temporary organization. It is trying to become permanent, but it is temporary. And it's designed to search for a business model. And you must keep searching for the business model. You may think you have it, but it's not true. You don't. Think again. Search for the business model and settle for a business model only when it is both scalable and repeatable. Repeatable means that you can sell the same thing many times over and over to new customers. I meet many startups who say, Martin, we have this wonderful customer. It's great, but it's not repeatable yet. So the business model must be repeatable. And number two, it must be scalable. Scalable means that you can increase sales without increasing your own cost level much. If you have a sales model where you need to deploy a lot of people when you're selling, it's not scalable. You have to spend all the money on expenses or people. So a scalable business model is one where sales growth can outpace your expense growth. When you're onto that, then your startup company can try to become a permanent organization. And you can start having organizational structure and policies and all of that. But until then, it is a temporary organization. And it's important to know and acknowledge it. Don't try to be a permanent organization until your company is completely ready for that. <clears throat> and then it's just go for it. Just do it. Build on leadership. Figure out your technology. Figure out your business model. Just go for it. And don't listen to all the advice you get from smart people on stage because they are just saying things and they are making mistakes all the time themselves. But going for startups is something I think is very important. So I'm very happy to note that yesterday I joined a startup as CEO. I'm looking for a scalable, repeatable business model. We're looking to hire people. We have a company called HackerOne. And together with you, we are making the internet safer. It turns out that all the bugs in the world were created by human beings. And it also turns out that the only ones who can find them are other human beings. So we go out and crowdsource, ask the community to find vulnerabilities in internet systems of companies like Airbnb and Twitter, uh, Yahoo, Adobe. And when they find the reports, they send them to HackerOne and we give them to the companies. And that is a business. That is our purpose in life, to build a huge business in, by reaching out to the intelligence all around the world, the intelligent people all around the world who have the creativity and imagination to find the vulnerabilities before criminal organizations find them. And that is how we build a safer internet. So with that, good luck with our, your startups. Build amazing businesses. I'll be cheering and following you and seeing you succeed in this world. Thank you.